everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in on you. I'm actually uh, doing a million things this morning. It seems like getting the kids off to school, getting everything prepared. Uh, on the way to the office now, got to break away from the office to pick up Marion from the airport uh, this afternoon. Um, and it's been, you know, uh, a crazy few days. But uh, anyway, uh, I've gotten to the point right now that I'm literally politically fatigued and I have been avoiding political conversations uh, for a while. Now, you know, I've been talking more about things that are going on in the community in, in, in different ways outside of the political arena uh, because I'm just f p politically fatigued uh, with politicians and my people. Uh, politicians are politicians doing what politicians do. And so it's always something to keep you, uh, if you are aware. And that's the important thing is being aware. If you are aware, if you've done your homework, if you read, if you do your uh, diligent due diligence uh, to gain an understanding of how things are really flowing, how things are really working, what things really mean versus what you've been being led to believe they mean and what's going to happen. Uh, you will understand how we're constantly being manipulated and played. And I'm, 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 I'm fatigued to dealing with my people because uh, over the last 60 years, we have literally, close to 60 years, we have literally uh, increased voter turnout every presidential election cycle, except the one where Trump was elected. Um, that was the one time, and I think it was sort of a let down because uh, Barack Obama was leaving office and you know so many blacks had lived vicariously through the quote unquote first black president uh, that's a whole nother conversation uh, uh, on, on, on a number of different levels but you know so uh, we were kind of you know blase about it but uh, then you know, um, uh, every election cycle increase, but and like clockwork, they get 90% of our vote. They run the same game, they do the same pandering, they make the same alleged, you know, uh, points from a different perspective, using different words and different angles. And what happens is we bite on it and we go for it. At what point do you sit up and say, okay, I've been doing this for 50 plus years and I've got nothing in return for it? Absolutely nothing. At what point do you sit up and say, this isn't working for me and I need to do something different? Uh, I have taught um, religiously and to the chagrin of many of my black brothers and sisters that we have given way too much emphasis to the vote and not enough emphasis to economic power and fluidity we are waiting on we are thinking we can vote our way out of our situation especially on a federal level when you're talking about we make up a total of about 13 plus percent of the population and voting is about majorities uh, nobody's been able to do the math for me explain to me how that works uh, then you take into consideration redistricting and all the other things that consistently dilutes that even more uh, and you will understand that even in the districts where you are predominantly black and you're voting and you're putting black people in, they are going in and they are working uh, on behalf of the, the system. You can't stay in power and not be a part of the system. The system will not allow it. Um, you can talk, you can have all your talking points. You can raise sand, kick dust and and, and, and have your committee hearings and talk crazy to people and have people go, man, they really checked them. And you can do all those things, all that grandstanding. 
when it comes down to actual legislature, that may be in a way specifically empowering the black people, you will not do it. You will not do anything that is going to in any way unleash the black race. That's simply not going to happen. That's been in place since day one. We were never meant to prosper in this country. The system isn't built for us to prosper. You can't be pro-system and talk about prospering. That's not going to be how it works. Why am I talking about this? Because everybody's talking about a couple of things. What got me amped up and said, okay, I'm going to talk about this this morning is the fact that Jim Clyburn comes on the Ricky, Miley, Ricky Smiley Morning Show and Ricky is doubling down on supporting narratives that have very little validity, if any at all, no real true data to support it just the feeling and that goes from what Jim Clyburn got on there talking about voter suppression all the way down to uh, what uh, Dr. Collier whatever his first name is got, gets on there and talks about with COVID which is absolutely ridiculous if you've done the research and you've put it out there and uh, that's all I'm going to say about that because I don't want to get in any kind of trouble for talking about COVID so we, we're, not, we're not talking about any facts about that on here, but we definitely gonna get deep off into it on Rumble. And so I want you guys to go over to my Rumble channel and subscribe because we gonna get down and dirty on Rumble. Rumble lets you get down and dirty. Uh, I did some research and a couple of other places that I'm probably gonna pop in on as well, but uh, Rumble lets you do what you do, uh, you know, Maybe after they get a few lawsuits and a bunch of other things, they'll start being a little uh, a little more strict. But right now, it's go for it. And so that's great. But uh, this Biden thing, we'll talk about that then. We're we'll going to talk about this voter suppression thing real, real briefly. Okay. Now, the thing is, I'm going to talk about it from where I know. Okay, Biden is getting drugged right now because uh, of the failure to properly withdraw troops and the collapse of the Afghan government with literally within seems like minutes after they drew it out. Well, the thing is, there are so many different things that politicians don't understand. There's so many different things that you cannot account for, even as a very great military leader, whoever your generals and your admirals and all of those people who understand uh, military science and uh, war strategy and all this all that's great but if you don't understand the culture of the people you're engaging if you don't understand the culture of the people you're trying to help if you don't understand the culture of the people you're trying to stop if you don't understand the culture then you have a very important element that you haven't accounted for that can totally disrupt first of all we shouldn't have been in there we're talking 20 freaking years we shouldn't have been in there but we're in there and we've mishandled it from day one, both Republicans and Democrats. While I am not a fan of Biden, can't stand the dude. I think he's trash. But he's sitting in the Oval Office, so he's going to catch the flag. And yes, he made some horrible decisions, but dude was not mentally to me, mentally sound when he was elected. I kept saying this, check this guy out. There are some signs that uh, cognitive uh, deficiencies all over the place. And nobody's seeing this. I'm the only person seeing that this dude is forgetting stuff in the mid-sentence in mid -sentence, and that he's saying stuff that doesn't make sense. I mean, you know, but again, at least he's not Trump. And that's all that matters especially to my people. At least he's not Trump. No, he's just the dude that authored and supported more legislation than any other one senator to, to devastate blacks. He's only the person who sit up and fought desegregation in schools in the 70s and the busing, specifically the busing legislation. He literally fought at Newton and Tail because he didn't want black kids turning uh, his children's school in the jungles. 
That dude, that dude that before we even talked about the 94 crime bill was authoring stuff in the 80s. That dude, that dude who is buddy, buddy, buddy with Strong Thurman. Come on. Democrats love to sit up and throw that word racist and racism around as if Democrats aren't racist. That, you know, Republicans are racist and, and Democrats are pro-black. And they've sold us that bull crap for so long. We've bought into it. We ride it like nothing else. We don't do our research. We don't see who's authoring bills. We don't listen how they debate bills on the floor to see what our particular person is doing that we voted in our district on a local level to send to Washington. We don't pay attention to any of that. No, they sit up and tell us they racist. And because Republicans tend to be conservative and support business, which is automatically going to be supporting people who are in a higher tax bracket. Republicans are for the rich and Democrats are for the poor. Man, most of those people, especially senators, Democrats, senators, are wealthy as hell. They've made sure, if they, especially if they've been in there any time, you know, you got to understand the way the game is played. You got to understand how Barack Obama got into uh, the Oval Office and how he was fast-tracked in there. Uh, just think, wasn't the first time you ever heard of Barack Obama? And then what, a few years later, he's in the White House? Well, I've, I've, I've researched him all the way back to the beginning of the 80s. This dude was plugged then. Um, became a uh, student of Brzezinski, Br 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 if you don't know who that is. You won't understand any of this. Read The Grand Chessboard by Brzezinski Brzezinski. Read his books, period. That's one of the things that we don't do. We've read Asa Hilliard. We've read um, Naeem Agba. We've read Joy DeGraff. We've read France Fanon. Uh, we've read Amos Wilson. And that's important. Yes, we definitely need to do that. However, we need to also read the books of their bright minds, of their brilliant minds. And when it comes to geopolitics, I haven't seen a more brilliant mind than Brzezinski, Brzezinski, who just died, I think, like in 2017. His daughter is still like on some, uh, she's an analyst for some, some, one of these networks. But he is, uh, he explains the whole superpower thing, geopolitics, why uh, everybody is always focused on what's going on in uh, the Middle East. Um, and uh, it's not just about oil, um, the importance of uh, Europe and so many more things. You have to read that book. It'll help you understand a lot of things and why things are being done and why we always seem to find ourselves in other people's business. Uh, but anyway, make this quick. The bottom line is just not planning and understanding the culture. You train these soldiers with your best. You, you, you send SEALs and Army Special Forces guys over there to train these people who were supposed to eventually be able to stand up to the Taliban. And when the Taliban, two things happen. You underestimated your enemy. Never underestimate your enemy. You thought you had dealt them such a blow that they were barely existing. Wasn't the case. They outweighed you. They literally outweighed you. They didn't show you their hand. They put up just enough resistance, caused just enough trouble to let you know they were there. And, and you would, you know, you would squelch it. You would knock it down and it made you feel powerful. We got this. And you were, at the time, training these soldiers, these Afghan soldiers, to take on the Taliban. And what you cannot account for, if you don't understand the culture, is what type of heart they're gonna have to go the distance. And they obviously didn't have the heart. They folded like a piece of paper when the, when the onslaught came. And it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, but 
what what's going to happen now is as as it has been for a while we're going to be the laughing stock of the world and we're going to give confidence to rising powers like china which is more than likely within a, a short period of time going to be the next superpower in the world um and america will have to take a back seat to a certain extent uh, I don't see it being drastically initially because America still has a very powerful military and the most powerful Navy. So there are certain things we're just going to be able to do based on that. But economics wise, see, we sold, we won the Cold War based on uh, being able to sell capitalism over communism to those in the Middle East, to those in Asia, to those in parts of Europe. And that's how we gain the support uh, of those nations, along with a lot of manipulation and the funding of coups and a bunch of other things that overthrew leaders who didn't support us. A lot of that happened as well. Um, you know, um, and so you got to understand when you, you see so many different nations uh, at odds with the USA, not liking the USA and want to bring home the USA. It's not because they're evil and we are moral. It's because we've been all in their mix for so long, causing so much disruption, so much frustration. We just spent 20 years in Afghanistan, costing I don't know how many thousand lives for US troops and how many maimed and killed citizens in Afghan and uh, so much more, only for it to end up being exactly where it was when we got there. Because we did not understand the culture. We did not understand what we were dealing with. That's why we weren't able to totally win anything in Iraq. We didn't understand the culture. It's hard to defeat an enemy with the fear of death when the enemy is coming there to die. That, that's just part of the culture. The next part is you underestimated your enemy because from what I understand, the, blitz, the blitzkrieg that they unleashed when U.S. troops pulled out was nothing short of amazing. Within a matter of hours, I think, or less, they had been taken over. Uh, whatever it is, they were, 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 were trying to take over the city of Cabal, I believe. Didn't take long at all. This was no long drawn out battle. Them people dropped them guns and ran. And so all of that was for nothing. You, 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 we spent a trillion dollars on this war. A trillion. Billions and billions of dollars that could could have been spent elsewhere where it was more needed on the guys that we're stabilizing a region where we still have all type of terrorist activity going on um, and we still have a st strong push from the opioid uh, uh, business coming out of there uh, I mean what did we do besides cost American lives cost American money um, and make ourselves look stupid nothing uh, this whole voter suppression thing and I gotta get out of here because this is a very short day with everything that I have to do um, but I'm, I hope to come back while I'm in the office. This voter suppression thing. Again, you're 13% of the population, but they're making this whole thing be about, this is about Republicans and Democrats. This is not about blacks and poor people. This is about Republicans and Democrats. They're trying to say because uh, they were able to swing Georgia from red, uh, from, uh, red to blue, um, that now states uh, that are traditionally Republican are passing laws that will allow them to reverse uh, voting uh, outcomes. And I'm still reviewing the bill. Some of the stuff that shouldn't be that, I mean, something as simple as you need an ID. Now, I understand that ID is a big thing in the, in the inner city. I'm, I'm still shocked at how many people don't have IDs. Uh, uh, that 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 I've come across personally, people in my family, I'm like, well, hey, you just got that. I, I don't have an ID. I'm like, okay, I get it. One way that you can buck the system is I ain't getting no ID. Well, 
If you're going to sit up and have some kind of play in the system, you're going to need one. But they're saying you got to have an ID. And they're saying that in the case of where they can identify voter fraud, they are going to be able to overturn the election based off of the fraud. Uh, I haven't been able to get a full look at it because, again, so many things are going on. Uh, but what I can tell you is uh, I'm going to look into it some more to find out if there is really true suppression in the sense of, you know, aimed at a certain group or if Republicans are simply doing what Republicans do and that's put giving them an edge over Democrats in some kind of way. And, 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 and the thing is, I don't have a, a horse in that race and neither do blacks if you really understand how things work. Democrat or Republican. That's the right wing and the left wing. The, le right, the right wing and the left wing belong to the same bird. That bird's been shitting on black people from day one. We were never meant to be a part of their party. We were meant to be serving at their party in some kind of way got out of it and now they've been on us ever since. In, in, their, in their mind, in the mind of the people who pushed this system, we reneged on our commitment to serve them. And it's been on ever since. And we are going to have to be the ones to empower ourselves. With that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get off here. Finally, don't forget to sponsor my latest project, which starts off with book number 25. I'm excited about it. But I'm asking everybody to sponsor it. The link and the basic explanation will be in the description box. You can click the link, go to the page, and find out how you can sponsor. When you sponsor, you're going to get your name in the book, and you get to memorialize or pay homage to anybody you want to, alive or dead. You're going to have your name in the book. If you sponsor it $25 or more, you'll get the book for free. And if you sponsor $100, you will get a dedicated page to where only your name and your memorial will be on it. So... Uh, I am asking you to do that. Uh, it would be a great help to me to get this project done with everything else that's on deck. Uh, we're going to get it done regardless, but it would definitely be a help to sponsor. Check it out. Show some love. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and the way I bring it, show some love and on this sponsorship. Uh, this is my way of trying to partner with my community. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to talk to you again. Out.